Hiking is a mode of transportation. Rucking is a means by which to improve that mode. What's going on guys? I'm Randall. Welcome to Grunt Proof. This is Advanced Rucking. If you haven't seen the first video I did on rucking, it's linked up here. Go check that out first. This is for intermediate and advanced people and I'm also going to throw out a few tips for everybody. So here we go. Foot care. A lot of people have been asking about how to avoid blisters, prevent them, and treat them. And guys, I'm going to tell you this. In 19 years of experience rucking, you're just going to have to deal with it. That's not to say there aren't a few mitigations you can implement. We're going to get to those. Part of getting tougher during rucking, you have to remember it's a long, slow process. You have to build up your joints, ligaments, tendons. You have to build up your muscles. You also have to toughen your feet. Show me a man with soft pedicured feet and I'll show you a man who couldn't ruck more than six miles without tearing his feet up. So if you like to have pretty soft feet, rucking may not be for you because you are not going to be able to ruck that way without tearing your feet up. So let's go over the basics of blister mitigation and prevention. I did put up a fun video years ago on foot care using alcohol. So if you're curious, go check that out. Otherwise, I'll tell you right here. Rubbing alcohol is a very good prevention of blisters. It's better than baby powder because it's not messy. So you can take it with you. You can put it on your feet to help dry them out, especially if you're in a very wet environment. But when I'm building up my feet, I like to apply rubbing alcohol all over each foot, especially in the bad areas. If I'm doing a long ruck, when I take a break, I will reapply some alcohol. And then every time I come back from a ruck, I will reapply alcohol. And that will actually help dry out your feet, callous them, and it'll help toughen them up in the long run. A small bottle of rubbing alcohol could cost you anywhere from 40 to 90 cents. Before you even take off, if you've had some experience rucking, you are going to have what we call known hot spots. These are areas where your feet always rub and you always get some kind of issue. So if you're smart, before you go out on a hard ruck, you're going to pre-tape these spots. I've never been a fan of moleskin. It always fell off on me no matter what I did. And I had to throw duct tape or gorilla tape over it to keep it on. So I got tired of spending money on moleskin that did not hold on its own. And I just wanted to cut out the middleman. So I went straight to gorilla tape or very strong duct tape. And that's how I tape my hot spots. I've done that for over 10 years now and it's worked out well for me. If moleskin works for you, keep at it. So we tape our known hot spots, and then as we're moving, usually around four to six miles, that's when guys start to notice new hot spots. As a general rule, as soon as you notice hot spots, it's better to stop and address them immediately. Even if you're in some kind of competition, you're training up for SFAS or some kind of big army school, you need to learn how to be able to stop, remove your boots and socks, and quickly address that hot spot so you can move out again. No matter how pressed you are for time, it's always better to address that hot spot as soon as possible than to push through it and get a massive blister and then you can't walk for the next couple days. As far as taping goes, let's say I want to use some basic medical tape to do some preventative hot spot taping before I go out. What a lot of people would do is their average hot spot would be around a dime to a quarter size. So they would take moleskin just a little bit bigger than that, slap it on there, and after about two miles, that moleskin has rolled up in their sock and it's like on top of their foot somewhere. <laughs> That's some dirty tape. With tape, especially on the go, I like to have these little lips right here so I could just grab it good and get it taped on and then just rip that lip off. So that's a handy method to keep your tape ready to go. So if you're doing preventative taping, you need to keep in mind that you're gonna have a lot of rubbing on there. That means your size of tape or whatever you're putting on there, I would say it needs to be at least double the side of your hot spot in all directions. And let's say it's on my heel or the ball of my foot, I will actually wrap that tape all the way around to the top of my foot. That gives you plenty of coverage. If you notice your boots are going to rub in a specific area, just make sure the tape doesn't end in that area. So if you gotta go further, go further. There's nothing wrong with putting too much tape on a possible hot spot. If you have to wrap it around your foot, just make sure you leave enough slack in there for your foot to expand while you're rucking. About mile six of my EIB in Kuwait, I started to get a massive blister right on the midsole of my foot. 
I ignored it and just pushed through the pain because I did not want to fail the EIB time. And I did pass the EIB very painfully. That blister eventually rubbed off during the ruck. By the time I was done, I had a nice, huge, open wound that all I could do was put Neosporin and dressings on for the next couple days, and then I just limped around post. I was young and dumb and tough, and I just wanted to push through pain. Had I had known how to quickly and properly address that hot spot, I could have stopped as soon as I felt it, taped it up real quick, and then jogged for a little bit to catch up with my time, and I probably wouldn't have had any issues the next day. So let's get to the preventative measures. Number one, you need to have well-fitting boots. You do not have to buy a size up. Buy boots as they fit. That means while you're standing in them, you should have about a half inch or a thumb's worth of wiggle room for your toes. If you have wider feet, you need to get wide boots. On that note, they should be combat boots. You should never be rucking in tennis shoes. There are many reasons why, but I'm telling you, if you want to ruck, you want to get good at it, and you want to get tough, you have to ruck in boots. You get ankle support, a rigid sole, and you also get boots that can hold up for years of rucking. With soft tennis shoes, you will end up rolling your ankles or destroying your feet in some kind of way, usually stress fractures or very bad shin splints. So do yourself a favor, get combat boots, buy them the right size, and toughen your feet up, get used to the boots, and you will thank me later on that. Everybody's feet are different. Some people's feet don't fit into combat boots that well using all the laces. So one trick I learned was you can use two separate laces. You can use one down on the midfoot and then you can use a separate lacing system going up your shin. The point with the two shoestrings is that you can cinch it down at the bottom of your foot so your foot is not moving around so much in the bottom. And then skipping to the next eyelets allows for more movement in your ankle. And then continuing up with the second lace, that allows you to cinch that strap down all the way up against your shins. That gives you plenty of extra room for dorsiflexion. Sometimes the combat boots, they pinch people right up there in their ankle area. One thing I would do once I get a new pair of combat boots, I would actually lace it all the way up from the bottom. And then I would skip those two eyelets right there at the top of my foot and then continue on weaving the laces. That would also give me extra mobility in there. So for some people, that's about better ankle control and mobility. For me, it was about controlling how much my foot moved in the bottom part of the shoe. Remember though, once you break in your shoes, you're going to have to readdress that issue. So one more note on lacing. When you are getting ready to ruck, you should stand up and lace your boots. You're not sitting down while rucking. You're standing up. Your feet are spread out. Your toes are a little bit splayed. So you should lace your boots up with all of your body weight on them. Well, that is it, guys. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully you learned some good things. If not, hopefully you were at least entertained. Stand by for those next videos where we will cover many other subjects involved in rucking. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the outdoors. Take care of yourselves.